Emma Goldman by Sally Ann Drucker. Thank you very much for joining me, and thank you for coming to Montgomery College. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. In the question and answer period, you, you talked, and in your performance, you talked about uh, Emma Goldman's relationship with her family, but you didn't mention her mother very much. Was there a lot written or that you could find out about her mother and their relationship? She did write some about her mother in her autobiography, and it was a distant relationship. She was the uh, child of one marriage, and then her mother remarried, uh, and uh, there were other siblings that came along, and her mother was, I think, unhappily married the second time married for economic reasons. Perhaps this affected Emma's perspective on marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, uh, she seemed to be such a fearless character. I was wondering if she kind of got that from her family, or was it because she was breaking away that she uh, needed to be an individual? I, I'm just wondering where she got that fire and that determination to, to push forward. I think it was the breaking away. Uh, there isn't any other family member that I can think of that was similar to her. But I think she was influenced by her family, perhaps in ways that she didn't even realize. Her father was uh, at one point doing something for the state related to their uh, state drama troupe as a businessman. And so her lectures on the drama may have been related to that. Yes, and, and I noticed that she wrote a book that uh, related to, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it was about the, the drama. And, and mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that and the, um, the groups that she started and what she would do when she came to town, into a town. Well, certainly she believed that the arts could be a vehicle for uh, change. And she talked about the plays of Ibsen, Strindberg, and was friendly with Eugene O'Neill. Mm -hmm. And when she got to town, she called it her drama of liberty without strings, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> uh, because she knew that it was very likely that either the hall would be closed down before she ever was able to lecture, all of a sudden the fire laws would be that you could only have nine people in this room and Emma Goldman's audience couldn't gather, mm -hmm. or she might be arrested during or after she said something that the powers that be felt she shouldn't be saying. Mm -hmm. But she had previously, before she ever got there, gathered together citizens who she felt would support freedom of speech. And then if she got arrested, they would be uh, certainly publicizing that at, with the newspapers and making a great fuss about it, and then would form a chapter of her uh, Free Speech League afterwards, which, as I mentioned, inspired the Civil Liberties Union. Mm -hmm. In, these, um, in the uh, this Free Speech League, did she come with a script, which seems so unlike uh, Emma Goldman style, or did the people develop what they wanted to do as a performance? What, what would a performance look like? And in other words, when Emma came to town, what would she do in one of her speeches? Would she, uh, not so much the speeches, but when she, in terms of drama, would, would there be plays that would be produced, or what would come out of the her being there and working with the group of people in the town, what would the result be? Would there be a stage performance? Or? No, I, I don't think that it was an actual theater performance. Okay. She called it drama, drama without mm -hmm, strings, mm -hmm, but it was her mm -hmm. own drama. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, or liberty without strings, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be that they would organize around freedom of speech issues and would form little chapters of what now would be the equivalent of the American Civil Liberties mm -hmm, Union. Mm -hmm. So it was a political kind of thing. Right. Did she write about remembering what speech she gave when Baldwin began to get his ideas of the American Civil Liberties Union, or was it all of her, just sort of a, she, she gave the same speech, or was there one particular speech? It probably she, wasn't one in particular because they maintained their relationship over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he writes about Emma Goldman in, in his uh, memoirs also, mm -hmm. and letters. Uh, and Johann Most, was he her mentor? Was he considered a mentor? He was definitely her mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, he really did get her started on her speaking career. She might not have even gotten involved if it hadn't been for Johann Most saying, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she started lecturing actually to the German anarchists because she spoke fluent German. Mm -hmm. and, and he had a German newspaper, a German publication. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and he was very well known. Uh, and he was uh, definitely in love with her, and whether or not they were actually lovers at the same time that she was lovers with Berkman uh, is, is a possibility. Mm -hmm. 
What was the issue that had uh, th that caused the break between them? Not so much a, a romantic one, but was was there a, an, an issue? I read something about um, him wanting to adv advocate the overthrow of capitalism and her going to a, a group of workers and one of the uh, uh, older workers saying that we really need the uh, the eight hour day, and she realized that it was that the um, the eight-hour day was sort of a, a disguise for what most really wanted, which was the overthrow of capitalism. Is that a, a correct? Uh, I, I'd have to look up that reference, mm -hmm. but certainly Emma was was practical, and and she wanted to see people's lives better. Mm -hmm. uh, she was not glued into theory, so that if somebody was ignoring what people really needed, mm -hmm. she she would be focused on what they needed for their lives betterment right then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also read that she um, had a strong belief that human beings uh, wanted social stability to mutually aid one another and they also believed in freedom of the individual. Uh, did she ever find a practical balance of that because she wanted that but did she find that? In, in her own life? Yes. Uh, of, yes. Or, uh, or in, or in, in society? Own, in or? her own life and, and in society in general. Did she find pockets of where that was going on? Did she find enough of that to consider it a balance or was she sort of frustrated by they're not, they're not listening or they're not doing this? Do, do you know what I mean? I think in her own life she tried to have a collective uh, wherever she lived. Her house was always the center for people who needed a place to stay, uh, meal times, um, you know, people's works, uh, working lives and personal lives were very integrated in these um, environments, particularly East 13th Street in Manhattan where mm -hmm. she published Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the hotel room in Russia became a, a gathering spot for American radicals who were passing through. Mm -hmm. So I think she always tried to have a kind of collective atmosphere wherever she was personally. I think in the larger society, she never really found it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and did, did she write about sort of being frustrated about that, about not yes. really finding it? Yes, uh, she, she did. And I was also impressed with her frustration um, in terms of her love life, because it, she writes about that in her autobiography. Of course, she's writing about it in her later years. Um, but she doesn't have a lasting relationship that's a close one, except with Berkman, and that's no longer an intimate one. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, she feels that at that point in her life, she's not looked at that way, mm -hmm. and that it's not fair, mm -hmm. since Berkman still is. <laughs> yes, yes. Did his suicide surprise her? She knew he was ill. Had he been depressed, and it, and it wasn't a surprise, or did it absolutely shock her? You mentioned she was mm -hmm. devastated by it. It, it shocked her, mm -hmm. yeah. I think. It was close to her birthday when he killed himself, and it was just out of the blue. And, and she, she, she knew he was somewhat despondent, but didn't expect suicide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go back to Mother Earth, uh, the, 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 the publication she had. Uh, what types of things did she have in there, in, in the publication? Well, there were essays. And in fact, there's a book out recently uh, of the uh, publications, uh, you know, excerpted publications from Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was people from the past, uh, notables of the day, literature. It never developed as good a reputation uh, for literature as Margaret Anderson's little magazine uh, that was uh, being written at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were a lot, of, a lot of essays that people wrote on all kinds of subjects that were of concern at the time on, on different uh, areas of anarchism, women's rights, freedom of speech, uh, anti-conscription, whatever causes were there. And things about, uh, you know, literary excerpts as well. Mm 